Now the power of celebrity, you know, the entertainment and music industry basically use that power to influence this generation. I mean, they influence what we wear, what we listen to, everything. It's just because so many people are focused on that. The power of music can be understood by its origin. And in the Bible, Ezekiel chapter 28, it talks about Lucifer, who was a spiritual being a long time ago. His body was made up of instruments. Hence, the power of music draws attention and its influence is extremely strong on humans. Duh, right? So the band that we have on today, Icon for Hire, they understand that and they poke fun of that power just a little bit. We've got a fascinating mix of personalities today, something for everybody. Here is Icon for Hire. I love writing music and as I'm sitting at the piano in my room, like thinking it out, I'm always thinking of like, the 14 year old kid listening to it and how it can impact them and then I'm thinking if they're taking the time to come to a show I'm gonna do everything I can and give everything I can not just with like the super fun energetic show but trying to like shove my heart into them you know for either just the 30 seconds that I get signing their poster you know like Lady Gaga whenever she signs she tries to write like a little message she goes I want to be memorable I'm not saying that we're looking up to Lady Gaga but I love the idea of every interaction them taking away something and that can be so hard when you know yesterday we were doing a signing with a couple 300 kids for like an hour and what do you do to connect with every kid hi thank you for coming to the show your hair looks great like you can't you know like help every person that you meet but I I just want to inspire them um, in some small way, if they can even just like walk away, maybe like seeing life in my eyes or something, just dumb like that, that, that can inspire them to um, follow after like what's important to them. And it's, it's, it's like why we do music, you know, to help. I feel like there's a huge misconception with what a band in our position has to do. There's some type of standard. And we've been criticized in the past because we don't call ourselves a Christian band. We've always called ourselves Christians that write music together and the reason and we weren't Christians all in the beginning though either so. and that, that's a, one of the main reasons I was a I was a pretty hardline atheist whenever this band started and yeah right and I was like speaking in tongues trying to save the world on stage so it was a very different contrast <laughs> yeah so for, for people to be like oh you're a Christian rock band I just, we're not gonna just answer that to appease people to make it simple it's been a conflicting argument in our career but it, with all that being said I think my point is that I don't know how to bring someone from a place of brokenness to Jesus Christ. I don't know how to do that. What I do know how to do is I know how to look at a kid and genuinely tell him that I'm appreciative of his support and I can share what I've been through. But I, there's this huge misconception that if you're a Christian in a band, it's your, your you know, ultimate goal, your, it's your job is to always, you know, yeah. do the same thing that all the other bands are doing. I think there's bands out there that are blessed and that's their spiritual gift and that's, that's right. what they're meant to do. And I think that's amazing, but I think to hold every band to that standard is like holding every Christian to the same standard of like, you to the same standard as a pastor, as to a priest, as to a youth leader. Like, that, I, don't, I don't know, I don't feel like that's accurate. And inside of our band, <clears throat> excuse me, we meet kids where they're at. And we plant seeds everywhere we go. You know, and the Bible says someone plants someone else waters. And so whenever, you know, like the frustrated mom walks up to me and is like, why aren't you talking about Jesus on stage? It is so frustrating because what we're, we're just throwing out seeds. We're just trying to show love and, you know, trying to make a dent. Well, our, our whole band name is satirical, the whole icon for everything. I mean, it is making fun of the system we're working in. The whole idea of being a rock star is a joke. To think more highly of someone because they're on a stage is ridiculous. And yet our culture puts people on podiums because they're pretty. I mean, it's, it's such an incredibly empty culture and empty yeah. system, even in the Christian world, if not more so. And yet we're inside of it. So it's almost kind of like we're poking fun at ourselves, like we expect to be the change, and yet we're working in the same system. I grew up in a home that didn't go to church, but my mother tried to raise us with Christian morals and ethics. Don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal, you know, don't drink, don't smoke. Do as I say, not as I do was kind of the, the theme in our house because um, both my parents you know, enjoyed alcohol. I was sexually abused when I was about four by a family member come to find out later in life that sexual um, abuse actually runs pretty rampant in my family. Not from my mother and father, but from different family members. Uh, so I really didn't have a relationship with my dad. I really went, I, I sought validation from women 
um, from a very young age and I mean to really condense my story I, I pretty much threw away a good portion of my life till I was about 25 years old um, with just sleeping around and drinking and really just pushing the limits as far as I could go. I met our guitarist and we were just two peas in a pod with that lifestyle you know we thought we were rock stars um, jamming to Leonard Skinner out in the garage in the middle of a cornfield getting drunk and we were so just <laughs> oblivious what was to really going on. Sean got clean and cut you out of his life. And cut me out of his life. Um, you know, and I acted all tough and acted like I didn't care when I really did. And then Sean met Ariel and they started jamming. And they said, we need a drummer. And Sean said, well, I know a guy. And uh, I met Ariel and God just, I never had the moment where like the dove ascended upon me and my life changed. I struggle with the same things now. Pornography, alcohol, and women is the did, or is the day I started thinking I want to be a Christian. The difference is how I deal with those things and in my walk with Jesus. I mean, it's completely different, but my point is this. I'm still very young in my faith. Um, I'm still very much in the growing stages and like new to a lot of the Christianity aspects of things. Um, so yeah, I guess that's where I'm at. So I relate still to the bar more than the church. If that makes any sense, you know, I don't know what to say to the kid at the youth group. I do want to say to the guy at the at the bar drinking his life away. I can relate to that because I know that guy. I know that brokenness. I don't know what it's like to grow up in a Christian home um, with Christian music.